Hey guys, Caleb here with DSLR Video Shooter, and in this video, we're going to be making what you saw in the intro, this crazy effect where one object kind of transforms or morphs into a completely different object. And what I love about this technique is you don't need anything crazy to make it work. You can use any editing software. We'll be getting into all that here in a bit. But first, let's get into what you need to pull this off. Obviously, you'll need some kind of camera and a lens. You could use an iPhone or something a lot nicer like a DSLR or mirrorless camera. An optional item that really helps sell the look is some kind of motion control system, whether that be a simple motorized slider that goes back and forth or a more fully featured system like the Arc 2 that I've purchased, reviewed, and use a ton here on the channel. Next, you're going to need some editing software. You can actually use just about anything, including Final Cut, which is what I use, Premiere from Adobe, or DaVinci Resolve from Blackmagic, and we'll take a look at the technique needed in post in a little bit. And finally, what we're going to be doing in this video is creating two versions of this effect or look. A very simple one that almost anyone can create, and then one that's a little more complex but really adds a lot of spice to that final effect. So let's jump in and talk about setup number one. And for this one, it is very simple. All you need is an object to point your camera at. You need to take an image or record a clip of that object. Then you're going to swap it out with a different object, take another photo, or record another clip. And what you wanna do here is make sure that the second object that you're replacing the first one with is in almost the exact same position. If you have things kind of moved around or a little further from each other, it won't quite look the same. So if you're replacing a coffee cup with you know, a plant, make sure that they're almost in the exact same place when you switch them out. Now this next tip is critical to get the most out of this effect. And that is to make sure that everything but your object that you're changing changing stays exactly the same. This is really, really important. So make sure nothing changes in your shot except for the two objects that you're swapping out. Another quick note is you can do this with people, but if you do, make sure they're not moving a ton. If there's too much movement, the way this works in post-production and with our editing software, it'll kind of look weird. So you can experiment with it, but I would recommend having your subject stand very still uh, and try not to move too much. A little bit of movement's okay, just nothing crazy. Next, you're going to take those two still images or those two video clips import them into your editor. And this is where things get really interesting and where we create this morph or transform effect. Next, you can take your two clips and put them right next to each other in your timeline. And then in Final Cut, you're going to search in your transitions for the flow transition. Put that in between your clips, let Final Cut analyze it, and bam, you have this morphing effect, which just looks amazing. If you're in Adobe Premiere, you're going to be looking for the morph cut transition or effect, and in DaVinci Resolve, you're gonna be looking for the smooth cut. All of these do pretty much the same thing. So just like that, you have a really cool transition between two shots, but it's pretty static because we just have an image or a shot of something not moving. So we're going to be animating this here in a second to add a little bit of extra interest and really sell this effect without a slider. And then later we'll get into a really advanced setup that just looks amazing. But first I wanna talk about what's happening here and what these filters were originally designed for and how we're using them. So all these filters or transitions or effects that I've been talking about are actually designed for people when you're filming an interview or something like this video that I'm recording right now. Traditionally, if you're interviewing someone and they keep messing up and you have to do all these awkward cuts, really distracting and it just doesn't flow very well. In contrast, these effects let you smooth things out in post so that it's not as awkward when you cut from one shot to another. They're a little cheesy, but they do the trick if you're desperate and you can't cut away to something else. But what I love is the effect it gives when you're using it with objects, especially different objects, because these effects and these filters are essentially trying to mathematically find the difference between two images or two frames and then morph and kind of liquefy them uh, in between each other. So that's what these transitions are really designed for. We're using them in a completely different way, but in a way that I think looks amazing. So now let's get back to our simple setup and we're going to add some movement in post-production to really sell this look. Because what's so magical about it is the way it looks like like something is transforming into another object. And if there's camera movement, it looks like it's real life and it's just magically changing. So to do this in your editor, you're going to need to create some keyframes. So in Final Cut, I would recommend you just select everything you've done so far and put it into a compound clip, which kind of groups it into a single clip. 
Next, go to the beginning of your entire timeline and up in the inspector, which you can open with Command 4, create a keyframe for the scale as well as the X and maybe the Y. Now we're going to scale up the image so that when we animate a slide, we don't see any black on either side of our shot. Use the X axis to move the image to your start point. You could also add a rotation or a scale if you wanted to. Then go to the very end of your clip and on the very last frame, add another keyframe for your scale as well as whatever parameters you're changing. In my case, I'm just going to be adjusting the X axis to make a slide. Now when you play it back, there's some movement there, in my case, kind of a nice slow slide. And that really sells this effect because it looks like you're panning the camera and whatever you're filming is magically transformed into something else. Now let's take this a step further and do a little more of an advanced setup. So the principle remains the same, a shot of an object, another shot with a different object in the same place. And for this, I used my arc two to add a lot more movement uh, and more complex movement. So I'm doing a slide. It's also panning and tilting as well as a slight focus rack between two objects. And by setting up keyframes with that arc two, I can repeat the shot over and over and switch the objects out. And that's how I did that one shot with multiple cameras at the beginning of this video. So I did one shot with the GH5 and switched the camera out with a different one, did the exact same shot, nothing changed. And then in post, I lined those two clips up one on top of the other, making sure that the timing is exactly the same. One helpful trick to make sure this is perfect is to take the video in the top layer and lower the opacity so you can see both clips at once and make sure they're starting and stopping at the same time. Next, cut both clips at a point where you want the morph to take place and rearrange them so you have object number one clip and then object number two clip. Slap on your flow or morph cut transition and just like that, we have a crazy shot that just looks mind blowing. Another way you can customize this look is to take your filter or transition and play with the duration. Maybe try a really short duration for your flow filter or effect and then try a really long one and sometimes you'll get a really interesting effect that you prefer as opposed to just the stock duration in your editing software. This technique is awesome for objects and even people if you keep them still uh, and could be used for all kinds of different stuff here on YouTube for product reviews like I use it or if you're doing a commercial for an object, play around with this, so much you can do with it. I've really enjoyed using this technique here on YouTube and since so many of you asked about it, I thought I'd go ahead and put this tutorial together. So enjoy it. Go out there, try it out for yourself. That's gonna wrap it up for me. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.